Hello everyone, I'm back to another YouTube video, another history themed documentary video. Doesn't like the French Empire now that series is over. However, we are moving on to a nice little video here, which is one of my most favourite parts of history. Empires and European conquest and expansion. And today we are looking at a very interesting topic regarding that, and that is the scramble for Africa. So we'll see the link down in the description. Let's begin. <laughs> In 1884, at this point, Germany had been unified and Austro-Hungary had somewhat been strengthened. And to avoid total war over the continent of Africa, the so-called Dark Continent, the Berlin Conference was called in 1884 and 14 European nations colonised uh, the region and drew boundaries, drew boundaries and then colonised the region. Because, of course, not all 14 nations like Norway, Sweden, even Russia, uh, of course, are uh, underrepresented in the any land. Take a look at this just here, and this really shows the astronomical scale of what just happened in this immense conference. Here's the map of Africa in around 1880. You can see that besides a few coastal ports and British control of these regions in the north and south, and French control to the west, there's very little European involvement in Africa actually, apart from one or two explorers who might be in there. So that's that. Then look at this, fast forward to 1910, and there you go. Britain, France getting a lion's share. Egypt, Cape Town to Cairo, that's all British, along with Nigeria, Sierra Leone, Gambia. Togoland, Cameroon, that's German. Portuguese have control of Mozambique and Portuguese Guinea. Spanish have control of Spanish Sahara. And of course, the Italian have control of the former Ottoman, Com uh, Ottoman territory of Liberty they fought a war against. And of course, Italian Somaliland. An absolute huge change in territory with only Ethiopia remaining free along with Liberia and no African or actually black representative was at the Berlin Conference of 1884. So what had just happened? Well, Africa had now been completely and utterly transformed for the next three quarters of a century um, from 1884 to subject now European colonization. And it's no surprise that these ideals, you know, people like Cecil Rhodes, these idea that believing that you are the first race in the world and you do need to, the more of the world you inhabit, the better it will become. And of course, very scary master race theologies. And it's no surprise in part that estimated historians now say an estimated uh, 35 to 55 million uh, Africans uh, die as a direct cause of the scam of Africa. Check out my, um, you know, Congo video to find out that King Leopold II definitely took his lion share of that. So, this has of course all been achieved by absolute brutality and pretty significant conquest. Um, as Lord, Ki uh, Lord Kitchener, quote from Lord Kitchener actually here, um, when he was at the um, 1881 battle in uh, northern Sudan against um, the tribe Blackadder mentioned in, of course you've probably seen that if you watch some comedy in Sudan, uh, the British uh, launched the battle. In 1881, against the Sudanese under uh, General Kitchener, they had uh, modern rifles, and the Sudanese tribesmen had spears. And after a while, Lord Kitchener said, "I'm bored. The work is done," and he left the battlefield. Um, Civilization has now begun. Unquote. The British. Um, had a very strong ratio of um, victory against the Sudanese warriors because they had machine gun, first Maxim gun, the first ever type of its kind against the um, Sudanese warriors, which is why so many were killed. And of course, this continued in you know the French, uh, the French um, conquest in Algeria. I've already mentioned in uh, the previous French Empire series, um, the Italo Ottoman War in 1911, 1912, and Italy trying to subjugate Eritrea and then failing to subjugate Abyssinia, which of course remained independent along with Liberia. So Africa had now been modernized. You know, literature, language, culture have been spread to the continent, which to this day actually remain quite positive aspects of it. However, this is achieved by a very dark shadow of brutality, colonization, and it's a fair argument to say this ground of Africa is nothing but racism and about white supremacy 
trying to subjugate black people under a white rule authoritarian government. Although at the same time, Scrum Africa was of course at the time this new massive feat of colonialism and all these new vast ways of land being shared amongst European powers. However, when we take a look at the you know when we're at the map which you showed previously on of course Portuguese and Spanish or well, Spanish possessions particularly, as you can see they are slightly limiting to the Spanish Guinea and the Spanish Sahara and they fought a small war against France and Morocco. Yeah, with that Agadir crisis, you've probably already seen that video in 1904, 1905, and that 1912 as well, and that had failed uh, because of why? Because you know, 17th, 18th century Spanish Empire declined in South America, and they were economically at ruin from years of war and trying to maintain an empire. Of course, we know in today this is very, very similar and rhyming words because after World War II, much of decolonization did eventually happen. So. I think it was fair to say at the time that many European powers, particularly people like Lord Salisbury, King George um, uh, of England uh, the fifth, and Kaiser Wilhelm the second, even believed that this rule of Africa probably wasn't going to be forever. It was just there at the time to install economic monopolies and control of the continent. Uh, in fact, today, of course, Africa is completely decolonized, with only the British Commonwealth having any form of, of neo-colonialism over the continent and French economic systems in um, Niger, uh, Malawi, and uh, North Africa, Saharan regions. So that is the scramble for Africa, a truly interesting part of history about colonialism, imperialism, and conquest, to show that within just 50, literally, within a matter of minutes, without any African representation, Africa had been carved up, and the continent would change for decades to come, and was a reason things like the First World War, Second World War, and the very racist ideals that, of course, would later come, uh, would take fold and only increase brutality of warfare, like I said, years to come. And following colonization, many African states dead end into civil war or that fight between communism and capitalism. But that's another story. So thank you all so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Remember, sources in the description. Goodbye.